We're going to begin. I mean, obviously, well, obviously you, you'll know this, but it's, it's based on a, a novella, which obviously is obviously a short story. So is that, does that give you both a bit more creative license here when enlarging it for the screen? That is exactly the point we've been saying. The fact it isn't a full novel and the fact that when Hyde goes off and does things, he does things. And you say, what things, Robert Louis Stevenson? I, I think either Robert Louis Stevenson was, was very busy and said, I'm not going to fill all these in. Or he thought, if I don't write this, then... The, the imaginations of the citizens of the world of the 1880s, they will go mad and think, oh, my God, they did those worst things, those terribly horrible things. So it does give us, gives Joe and uh, me playing Nina Jekyll and Anne Rachel Hyde uh, a chance to go places and say, well, we take it this way, take it that way. It must be one of the most um, adapted stories, I think, going. Because I also did Treasure Island, which is Robert Louis Stevenson's story. And you've got to be pirates, and you've got to get in a boat, and you've got to go and get the treasure. You can't not go and get the treasure. You can't not get in a boat. Um, but here, you, you know, the adaptation that, that Joe and, uh, and Dan did with the screenwriter, um, that Joe did with the screenwriter, Dan, that, it's a modern story. So people coming to it, they won't know what to expect. Yeah, which is a joy, which is, you know, surprising the audience is the key with this sort of thing, I think. Um, giving them, making them feel like they know that what they're going to get um, and then just turning on its head and giving them something else. One of the things I loved about this sort of this version of it is the balancing of the very real themes. I mean, you've got the sort of character, obviously you've got life after prison, you've got the kind of the, the sort of drug abuse in his past as well. And then it was kind of interweaving that with the kind of supernatural landscape that we're familiar with with this story. Tonally, was that quite a challenge to balance the kind of human and the, the kind of more sort of supernatural in some ways? It was interesting, actually. It was the, uh, that was the thing that was, yeah, that was a challenge. I think it was trying to get that right so that we gave enough so that you understood Rob's character and his past without... Um, um, going too much into a social drama, um, but kind of retaining that because um, you know, his desperation is so key to what the events of the film and and what obviously Nina um, or rather Rachel perhaps is 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 maybe looking to use I guess. Um, but yes, the balance of that was really really important, and getting it right was was a challenge. But I think. I'm pleased with how we, where we ended up with it. I think there's just enough information there. Um, and because th these two troubles people together um, doesn't work unless you know the troubles. <laughs> I remember Tony, it did feel very much like a hammer. Had that hammer, kind of that kind of creepiness, but with a kind of bit of kitsch to it as well. <laughs> yes, kitsch, yeah. uh, operatic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you see, Hammer came to join us in the middle of the film. So um, Joe had already got the film. We were already shooting the film. And then I heard, hammer, this could well be a Hammer film. So the reboot of Hammer uh, is coming to join us. And so we are... And if you look at the earlier ha Hammer films, I think... The, the great actors that were in it, some of the great actors are in it, that we, we are matching for that. We're trying to get you know the best performance out. Great Lindsay Duncan is in it, and I'm performing again, uh, with again, because my career whole, the whole career started. First thing I did, dramatic acting, was with Lindsay Duncan. But um, it's also slightly different to uh, the earlier Hammer. I, I think the quality of the film, it looks like it's a much higher budget than we had. We are a little indie film. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I mean, that was always, and that was part of the challenge of it, was going, well, we've, we've got to make a movie here and we've got this much money, but I know that what I really see in my head is about 10 times the budget. Um, so, um, but I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I think, yeah, it's... it's and we've already seen, Joe's already seen um, um, some, some reviews are coming out where we're getting higher scores up against very high budget horror films, but not getting yeah. quite so high scores. So, yeah, that sounds pleasing. Yeah, that's that's fine. What, st what, what stage did, did you discover that Hammer were? Or is that something that comes in very, very early before you kind of even start developing it? Or did they, or did you, had, had you already kind of started developing it and then they come in and start and purchase it? They just start shooting, basically. I mean, I, yeah, it's, and, and Hammer's been on a journey um, as well. So it's kind of, it was there and then went away and then John Gorg took over and came back and, and, and it all came back to life again. Um, but when they came, officially came on board, originally we were about, I think, two days into, three days into filming or something. Right. I remember well, I heard saying. you saying whispers. I'm going, oh, yeah. right, okay. Does but that then, change anything when, when you find that out? You just, just, I mean, you do... Uh, you try not to think about those sorts of pressures. You just got to make a film. You, you, you're too busy to be thinking about the outside mm. facts, uh, factors like that. Um, however, you do start to go, okay, I really want to lean into some of these sort of stylings a little bit in terms of just at least the cinematography and things. And you just go, actually, let's, let's just push that a little bit. Um, but it was always designed to be that way. I always wanted to play in that gothic world and the yellow nights and the sort of, you know, lots of shadows and kind of being that classic um, cinema. I'm, I'm a fan of, like golden age cinema 
And so I always want to look for that cinematography. I'm not really down for digital looking films. We, we do end uh, operatic. Yes. We, we, we get more and more operatic. <laughs> we do. And I, was, I spoke to Scott earlier, who's lovely. And mm-hmm. I know you've obviously worked with Scott before on Chicken, yeah. and, and which is a great performance. Um, mm. He was saying that you guys did a fair bit of improvisation. Did you feel very comfortable in that space with your kind of comedic background? Well, it's the improvis- it was more dramatic improvisation. Mm. There was one or two things I said which turned out to be uh, Riley funny or, or black humor, uh, funny in a black humor kind of way. But uh, it's dramatic improvisation, which I was more interested in. But it was, it, it, people have to watch it and, and watch the, the final scenes when that was, it, it became quite a live um, um, series of scenes because they're series of scenes in the same location. It just keeps moving on and shifting on. And Joe gave me the chance to to uh, free them to take things a little di- bit one way, a little bit the other way. So um, it's uh, comedy improvisation is kind of similar to dramatic improvisation, but this was dramatic improvisation I was doing. But occasionally I did say things which I felt Joe could just cut out and leave, but the, one or two of them <laughs> stayed in. <laughs> and they they seem to they do something to the audience. The audience reacts, and it's. It, I, th- I wasn't sure that it was the right choice to do, but I think it does work. Having watched it again last night for the second time in front of an audience, they seem to like it. So it disarms you. Yeah, it disarms you, which makes the the scares kind of come out of nowhere even more because you yeah. kind of yeah. laughter is the sort of the key to getting people's. And it and it's a it's a black humor. It's not a mm. it's not necessarily good because what is this? What is going on with this this character at this point? Rachel has arrived and she's. Not, she's not what you not of this world. It seems. I think improvisation as well. I think just in general, I think is is as a tool, in in filmmaking anyway, is is a is a great way of really just getting an opportunity to do what you would ordinarily do in say in theatre is is have that rehearsal time, mm. and and at least with this one, you've mm. got a freedom with with a script a little bit. Um, what you can do is you can explore things and you can find things that perhaps you wouldn't find if you didn't do that, and that's why I like it. So yeah. that's why. I always think you can find something and some nuggets in there that are yeah. just perfect. And You're just trying to get lightning in the bottle at all times. Yeah. and Keeping it fresh. Is, yeah. yeah. And my, my final question, because I love that in this, because obviously Nina's trans, but it's not a kind of narrative device. It's just matter of fact. And I just wondered, as we're kind of constantly seeking to kind of progress and seek for sort of more representation in the arts, is that the next step to, to have representation but it not be a, a big deal in the movie? <laughs> that is exactly it. I was saying yeah. Will and Grace, I think, was mm. the tipping point. Someone's quoted that to me. I haven't checked all the way back, but, you know, Will was gay, but what didn't matter. You know, what was his adventures? If you had straight characters, you don't go, and will they be having sex all the way through? The thing? No, it's just, oh, they get to that, or they've lost the money, or they're not getting a job. They are getting a job. That was it. So, And that's how modern representations of people of colour, of, of LGBTQ, of men and women, just, it doesn't matter unless you want to make it some point of your story. Um, it should not matter. You don't have to make it, okay, are you going to have a trans problem in this film? Are you going to have a trans problem the next five minutes? No, it doesn't. You just happen to be trans. And then this hellish thing is going on where two people are cohabiting. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Best of luck with the release of the movie. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, you. Cheers. Hey, thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!